hydraulic fracturing in and of itself is not a new process. We've been hydraulically fracturing wells since the 1940s. What's changed in the last five to 10 years is the combination of hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling. Horizontal wells are actually drilled vertically from the surface and then slightly deviated to the point where you hit the target formation, you can actually drive the wellhead in a horizontal direction, which allows you to get at organic rich shale layers that have entrapped gas. There are some risks for contamination to groundwater resources and better understanding those is very important both from a scientific uh, standpoint and a societal standpoint. So when we say hydraulic fracturing, we're referring to the injection of large volumes of water into a, the well bore to crack the rock, which increases the, the local permeability near the well. And in the case of shale formations, for example, you may have naturally fractured systems, but you're not able to access all those fractures. So after you drill the well, deviate it horizontally and perforate the zone that you will fracture, you'll inject water. In addition to the water, it will have sand and other hydraulic fracturing additives, which are, serve to aid in controlling the viscosity, the density, uh, iron control, pH, um, et cetera. Having access to this formation and with the sand serving as a propent, you create these fractures and the sand serves to hold them open. So after the pressure is dropped, a lot of the water that you've injected into this formation flows back to the surface. And when I say a lot, I'm referring to uh, something on the order of 10 to maybe 40 percent. You may have, you know, several millions of gallons of water flowing back to the surface. Now this water contains um, high concentrations of salts. Uh, you also have many of the additives that you've injected back into the formation coming back, and this is re referred to as flowback water. One of the largest environmental concerns related to large-scale hydraulic fracturing operations is how do we handle this flowback water back at the surface? You know, typical water treatment facilities are not equipped to handle high saline fluids, and in some cases the uh, flowback water is enriched with naturally occurring radioactive materials such as uh, radium and, and uranium, which I exists in very low quantities in these formations naturally and can be either released or uh, at the very least, you're, you're having mixing of the interstitial fluids from the formation with the hydraulic fracturing waters, and this is coming back to the surface. My work has many implications, both from the standpoint of understanding uh, regulatory policy. When you're talking about the EPA is uh, currently un undertaking a study of hydraulic fracturing, and you need to know the science before you can implement sound regulatory policy. And I think there's also uh, op opportunities to just learn a lot about the subsurface when we haven't really explored uh, shale formations so much in the past. We know that these formations have often been source rocks for oil and natural gas, which we've been going after in, in a more traditional way and sandstone and limestone reservoirs. As we implement uh, hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling together, we now have stimulation in geologic formations on a much larger scale. A single well might penetrate uh, almost a mile in horizontal length, and so the rate at which it's being applied and the scales at which it's being applied are driving the science to under better understand what's happening um, in the subsurface, and if there is an increased risk for contamination, we need to understand what's happening at the small scale and the large scale.